Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Council Chambers on this uh, beautiful day, March 4th. I can see February's over. Thank goodness it was a cold month, and hopefully March is going to be a little bit better. So, members of Council, before you have an agenda, can I have a motion, please? Councillor uh, Eric Meyer, please. Um, I make a motion that Town uh, Council adopt the March 4th, 2019, the Governance and Priorities Meeting Agenda as presented. Thank you. Members of Administration Council, any additions? See none, I call the question all in favor. And that is carried. Moving on to the public input session. This is the time that we allow residents to uh, talk to council about anything that's not on the current agenda. Is there anybody that would like to address council? Yeah. See none, move on to presentations and delegations. Today we have three presentations. The first one is the Stony Plain Kinsman. Gentlemen. If you come forward again, uh, there's, there is a sign-up sheet, and if you can speak uh, your names into the mics for the record, and begin when you're ready. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, councillors, administration, fellow uh, residents. Uh, my name is Ed Burney. I'm the chairman of the Kinsman Christmas Hampers, and? And I have the great pleasure of being the co-chair. My name is Ray Cote. Um, this evening we come before Council and Administration. First of all, um, we, we cannot express how important the Kinsman Christmas hampers are to the community, but we also wanted to make sure that everyone knows that this is a partnership with the Town of Stony Plain. Um, it's near 40 years that this has been, been going on, and the difference it makes to the recipients is incredible. We will provide you a few facts tonight, but the biggest thing that, that we've, we took away from those that were recipients is the fact that their community cares, that someone at that time of year has gone out of their way, given of their time, their talents, their money, to make Christmas special to them. So this year, um, we had 601 families in Stony Plain and Parkland County West. And just to clarify, the Canets had more than that in Spruce Grove. So uh, when the numbers came out at 601, everyone thought it was all of Parkland, the city, the town. Uh, the Canets, I understand, had about 625. So we helped over 1,800 persons, and the Canets helped over 2,200. So in our great tri-region, 4,000 folks were the recipients of the generosity of, of our community. What is our goal each year? Our goal is to provide two weeks of food plus Christmas dinner to the families, um, gifts for all the children under 10, gift cards where the parents can purchase the appropriate gift for those youth 10 to 17, and then we also have what we call the share area where um, items such as hand-knitted gloves and toques and clothing and personal care items and all of those great things are done. And we hit our goal this year again. And we are just the conduit, the kinsmen. There was 215 volunteers show up on the one single day, let alone the other four days. 1,745 volunteer hours were done. And we just can't thank council and administration for all the assistance. This is a true partnership. We've been doing this together for many, many, many years. Um, we are very proud to say that 100% of all funds that get donated to the Christmas hampers go to the families. We have no administration. All of that is covered through our club service, and that's when we raise our money and, and we look after that. So if a dollar is given from a child, a dollar goes to the family, which is just incredible. Um, when we speak about the uh, food and gifts and, and uh, items that were given out, 1,200 boxes of items were given to the families, and protein and gift cards and the uh, cards for the youth total over $80,000. So um, this is a huge undertaking. 
Um, we as kinsmen are just blessed to be the conduit to do it. And we cannot thank the, the town enough. Your team at the, the pavilion were exceptional, incredible. Uh, we, we can't say, they, they, did, they did everything to make our life easy. Um, it's a big endeavor to do in five days, but every year we do it. And uh, we see that with the partnership we have, that this is going to be an incredible partnership for decades to come. And uh, on a side note, uh, my wife started sending me to the gym so that I can do it for decades to come. <laughs> um, so the reason we're here is to thank you, Council, and thank administration and your team, because we can't do this to get by ourselves, but we sure can do it together with our residents. And uh, it's an it's incredible. My partner always catches everything I forget. So uh, I'll turn it over to Ray for a few months. I just wanted to make a comment, Mr. Mayor, Council. And I've seen an evolution, especially this year in the program. Ed talked about so many recipients, but the donations have been amazing. But the evolution that I saw this year is all those young folks want to help. We had beavers going door to door. That's a branch of the Boy Scouts. No, the other ones, uh, going door to door and making collections. We had junior hockey teams standing in front of the grocery store collecting because, well, good old insurance reasons, we can't really have them helping assemble during the day, but they wanted to do something. They wanted to give back. And if you look at the donations that we get from the schools, they're just overwhelming. And this is where the very rewarding part is that now the community is even more involved in the giving as well as the receiving. Thanks, Ray. And uh, we also uh, have young people from the outreach. Uh, Ray is the retired principal of the outreach in uh, Spruce Grove, Evergreen, correct? Mm -hmm. And they've been coming to assist. So here's these outreach students coming to give to the community. It's, it, it is truly our, um, our volunteers range now from beavers and cubs, which I saw in West Terra. Uh, how can you say no to somebody this big telling you that if you give, it's going to a family? It's wonderful. But our older volunteers who can't physically do the labor actually come together, uh, these ladies and men, and they prepare the food for the volunteers because all of our grandmas and grandpas are great cooks. So I would say our volunteers this year were from four to I think 91 or 94, <laughs> which is incredible. Um, in the community, we have 41 locations plus 10 schools, and we also had uh, 80 locations that we share uh, with the Canets out of Atchison, so probably 200 um, places where people donate to, to the event. Um, and the question always came up, where, where is uh, our area of coverage? We are from um, Veterans Boulevard West, uh, Stony Plain proper, and we include uh, Paul Band First Nations, and we run up against the Wobman Hampers, Alberta Beach, on away, and to the south is Tomahawk, and then of course the Canets. So together we look after all of our friends and neighbors. Um, on behalf of the Kinsmen, unless you have some questions, Mr. Mayor or Council, um, it's just a heartfelt thank you, and. Uh, all I have. All right. Thank you for your presentation, and um, I think you hit it uh, hit the nail on the head. There is like we cannot do it on our own, and we did definitely need a community to uh, to build this community to stay connected. And uh, it is sad to see that the the needs continue to rise each and every year, but it's also satisfying to see the kinsmen and our community step up each and every year to make sure that no family is left out. So, on behalf of council, thank you, members of council. Any comments, questions, council Lowry? Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Ed and Ray. You, know, you, you did mention about the community cares and, and how this is the community coming together, which it, it really is, and we are very, very thankful for that. But I also want to recognize and thank you for being that conduit, being that avenue for the community to go to and to be able to do this. Um, you mentioned yourself, to put this on is an incredible feat. And when you hear things like it was done with zero administrative dollars from the donations, 
that's incredible. And it says so much about the organization. It says so much about how much you care about our community and how much you want to see everybody in this community succeed and have a wonderful holiday season. So thank you so very much, and I look forward to helping you guys out again next year. Thank you, Councilor. Yep, Councilor Bennett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Ray, you talked about the evolution that you noticed this year. And um, I was <coughs> noticing a, a evolution to some degree. In the, in the past, you know, people's hearts are so big, especially during Christmas season, that everybody tries to start up a, a fund or a, um, um, a drive to uh, raise money, to give out food. But um, in the past, I always kind of thought that fractured what we're trying to do. Because when little groups start to do things, um, it's not as effective as when uh, there's an organization that does such a great job, has all the names, knows exactly how to do it. And this year, I was noticing so many businesses that, um, that wanted to participate. It was, we have, a, we have a Kinsman hamper program. Or I noticed uh, one of the dentists um, put up something about for every donation we receive for the, for the Kinsman, we, we ourselves will double it. And so that too is a community coming together where more and more businesses and more and more organizations, I noticed that the food bank also uh, said, give your donations to the Kinsman. It's, it's because of your reputation and, um, and the kind of effect that, uh, that your group has on this community, that now we are all coming together. Businesses know they don't need to do it on their own. They can, they can participate with uh, an organization that's well organized and very experienced. So again, I, I thank you guys for all that you do for our community. Thank you. Deputy Mayor? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, thank you, Your Worship. And, uh, to you gentlemen and the other gentleman there in the back with the red shirt, the kinsman. Uh, you've come to thank us and, and I'd like to just flip it right around and say thank you guys and the ladies, the kinettes. Um, it's been a massive project for a good many years and uh, I hope you continue with it. Uh, sometimes people get tired and say, well, let's find something different. Great, I like to see that Ed shaking your head and uh, I can't see any council here uh, not being in support of your program. So please tell all your volunteers from the four to 94, thank you from us as well. Good job. Good job, thank you, Deputy Mayor. And as um, Ed has mentioned, um, his wife has put him on an exercise program so that he'll be here for another 40 years. <laughs> so we, we'd be expecting that, Ed. Uh, Councillor Maddies. I just would like to share a little bit of a story. I was uh, working the Christmas kettle campaign over the Christmas season and uh, with my husband and a fellow came into Friesen um, with his family and I think it was an extended family and he was very excited because he just got his Christmas hamper and they were able to buy some groceries and I, I didn't realize that at first he was trying to, wanted to donate a little bit to this Christmas kettle and he showed me that he didn't have any money in his pocket and I saw, you know, this makes me very, very, very happy that you guys have, um, you know, doing this in this community and, and uh, had helped a family like that. So it was really important and I was very pleased to see it firsthand, so. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Council Matters, Maddie's, anything else? Okay, see none. Definitely on behalf of our uh, council and our residents, thank you very much for the work that you guys do in our community. Um, it does take all of us to build it and we're very proud to be your partners. Thank you very much. Moving on to 4.2, uh, we do have another uh, presentation. Actually, it's an announcement, a joint announcement between uh, the Stony Plain Kinsmen and the Stony Plain Legion. So, ladies and gentlemen. Again, Gordy, just have to sign in there, just formalities, yes. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Council, uh, my name is Ed Burney. I'm a member of the Kinsman Club of Stony Plain and I am the chairman of a committee 
that is going to be uh, providing a bit of a very short PowerPoint of an exciting event coming to our community. And one of our partners there, Mr. Gord Morrison. Ed, Ed wrote me in, just so you know. <laughs> On behalf of uh, two five, our Legion. 256. 256, you bet. So we're going to see if, if we can get this to work. We've, uh, we've worked very hard uh, with the IT people, so I'm confident that, uh, yeah, you know, IT is awesome when it works. You promised me. So Mr. Mayor and Council, administration, community, we are finally able to share with you that September 1st, Sunday, September 1, the RCMP Musical Ride is coming here to Stony Plain. It has been a lot of work <laughs> so far and is going to be a lot more work. Um, special thanks, as you saw up there, we uh, enlisted the library. Uh, to help us with all our uh, IT and PowerPoints and such as that. So um, there's three, um, four groups really. The Kinsman Club of Stony Plain, Royal Canadian Indian Legion 256, the uh, RCMP Veterans Association, and the Stony Plain Spruce Grove and Enoch Detachment um, are going to bring this to our town. It has never been to Stony Plain, and it's been over 20 years since it was in Spruce Grove. Um, we are going to be uh, engaging other um, partners to uh, make this event happen. Um, we now have a signed contract, well, I signed a contract with the town. So the riding arena will be where the uh, show pr happens, the afternoon and evening show. The pavilion will become the stable for the 30 beautiful horses. Um, and we are just super excited um, to have the Legion on board. Um, it's going to be great for our community. Um, both groups, I guess we would say, are uh, committed to make it affordable. So uh, without sticking my neck out too far, but far enough that if I say it, it will happen. Um, we want to bring it to the town, the city, and the county so that um, students and seniors <coughs> pay $5 to see the show, and adults $10, and children under six are free because we want it to be family friendly. And how are we going to do that? We're going to go out into the community and we're going to partner with people to drive out the hard costs, and that will start after tomorrow's presentation to the Council of Parkland County. Um, it seems like we have a lot of time, but we don't. Um, we um, are super excited with what the RCMP have done already. Um, 
the pavilion will be the stables, which is full access. Um, the stable chair, or one of them, is sitting back there, Cal. He's promised me that there's going to be like a 30-foot walkway where you, the people can stand and talk to the riders and horses. Um, I'd really like to see that, but I'll trust him to that. Um, the RCMP on the east side of the building, uh, in front of the Blueberry Stage, are, is going to be a t uh, static display of RCMP, and uh, we are inviting other um, emergency services groups. So um, again, you are the first to get officially told. Uh, I don't even believe it's on the website yet. It's going to be coming up. We are the last ride in Alberta for the year. So it's going to be the culmination of their year. Um, what have we requested from the RCMP? We've asked for their helicopter to come, tack team, dog team, bomb squad, pipes and drums, yield cars, some others that I can't remember. And at this point, uh, every request has been met with, if not operationally in place, they will do everything to bring them here. So that is all free. Um, it's a alcohol-free event for family, so we're going to have a concession there. Um, Gord, I'll let you speak while I try to collect my thoughts uh, about the partnership. Well, your, your Worship, uh, Town Council. Um, it, when Ed uh, approached me about this idea and, and wondered if the Legion would be on board with uh, bringing this to, the, to, the, to our area, we wholeheartedly said yes. Um, there was no, there was no uh, second guessing. Um, I've been trying to find ways to partner with service clubs uh, within our region, and uh, this was a, a prime opportunity to, to bring that to uh, fruition from a Legion standpoint. So um, we're 500 members strong and looking forward to uh, bringing a great event to our, our town and area. And the Legion was a natural fit. Um, the Legion and the Kinsmen have worked so well together, and we have the same goals in mind, which is making our community better. Um, and I'm a Legion member too, so that helps. But, um, you know, everyone says, what, uh, what will this do? Again, it's going to show our tri-region how we work together as partners and, and, and do everything like that. And the, the uh, two main groups, the Legion and the Kinsmen, have committed that when we make a dollar, because I don't know if there'll be much more than that, but whatever there is, we are going to take all those dollars and reinvest them back in the community. We're, uh, that was unanimous from our groups again. So uh, whatever the proceeds end up being, we're going to put that back through our programs, through the Legion, through the Kinsmen, into our, our projects. So uh, we're super excited that we finally can talk about it. Um, I know that I can feel media eyes on the back of my head, so uh, it's, uh, that's good. Um, I don't know if you have any questions, Mr. Mayor. Or, uh... Nope, thank you much for the announcement. Uh, that is an exciting uh, announcement for sure. Uh, I am 45 years old and I have not yet seen the RCMP musical ride, so I'll be looking forward to that. Uh, I don't think many of us have because it doesn't come, off, come around very often, so which is a, a great uh, coup for you and your committee to have this uh, come September 1st. Uh, members of council, any questions, comments? Councillor Lowry. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you. Um, I just want to say how excited I am for this. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to have found out about it a little bit earlier on one of the committees that I sit on, uh, and it has been hard to keep my lips closed <laughs> because this is such an amazing event, and it will be, uh, as our guests said, such an incredible community event. Uh, we pride Stony Plain on our cultural and our inclusion and, you know, with what the Kinsmen and the Legion and all the partners are stepping forward to do, that just shines right through. And it is just a true testament to what our community is. And I've got September 1st circled on the calendar for a few months already now, and i impatiently waiting the date, though. I don't want it to hurry too fast. I'd like to get rid of the cold and enjoy the warm. So thank you very much. I'm very glad we can now share this publicly, and I look forward to help spreading the word and making this the best event it can be. And please let us know anything that we can do. Thank you. Councillor Bennett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All I, need, all I want to say is... <laughs> well done. 
Honorable, and that's a standing ovation from Councillor Bennett. But uh, for us to assist you in terms of marketing and just promoting it, can you share that um, little web thing that you guys had? You guys just did that little video? Sure. And then we'll um, have our um, it's, staff. It's yours. Cool. Um, you're the first ones who got them. So thanks to IT. We got it. A couple versions had to be done. But uh, yeah, now it's public. Uh, Town of Stony Plain, you are the first people who have officially known outside of our committee. Um, yeah, and and we really uh, appreciate you sharing that um, with the the uh, you know social media and all the avenues you have. Uh, it was pointed out that once I talk, there's a camera behind me, and it's going to be live time out there. So uh, we're super excited about that. And as we get more information, more confirmations, and and everything. Uh, we're just super excited to, you know, have 30 red surges on big black horses. Uh, you can go to the website actually, um, Riders and Horses under Musical Ride, and it's actually got pictures of the rider and the horses. And they're huge horses. <laughs> like I didn't know what hands were, but 16-2 to 17-3 is big horses. Thank you. Um, and there members of council. Okay, so again, thank you for that announcement. That is uh, huge, and I think our community will be excited for this. This is something that uh, will be an awesome event. As you mentioned, that uh, you want to make this affordable. Uh, I think you said uh, six and under free, uh, five dollars for ch for children, and ten dollars for adults. And so five, for, five I, for seniors also. Our seniors five for will seniors be five well. bucks. Okay. Well, I can't commit the town's dollars without the council's approval, but we do have a. Um, community grant program that we do. Um, I'm just going to put my neck up and them here and say that you guys will be granted the full amount. If not, come back and see me. And that, <laughs> that, that is my commitment to you. If uh, they will not give it, uh, I will be there because I think this is an excellent opportunity to showcase not only Stony Plain but the whole tri-region and the event that you guys want to make this uh, family friendly to give the most access to everyone that's that's around here is you know second to none well, we appreciate that support and uh, just even the access to your social media and, and your avenues of, of advertising would drive out huge costs to us to not have to do those too so we uh, once we have our full budget uh, we are getting costs um, we have to build the stables right Cal? So, so we have to build the stable, so there's a big cost there. Um, the dirt and bedding has to be 12 inches deep under wherever the horses are bedded and walk, except for to get outside. So there's going to be some, some costs, but uh, we're confident. Um, we've, we, uh, we know the community is going to step up, and uh, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful... Oh, and we forgot to say, the... Uh, Veterans, RCMP Veterans Association uh, are coming. They are our partner, but they are going to be having. They have the collectibles. They have they have the resource or the connection for to provide all the collectibles for the ride. So we're going to actually be able to have that stuff there for sale at a very reasonable price again because we're not looking to make a bunch of money. We want to make that very reasonable. So I'm pointing to. Councillor Lloyd, because I know he's in, involved with that group. But again, thanks to them on with their contacts. So um, one of the things we've been able, and I believe it's standard, but um, one of the things that really made it stand out for us is um, in the committee, we get to choose a senior's home where they will actually trailer two horses and two riders will go there and they will in the parking lot meet with the residents and then the riders will actually go into the rooms of those who are unable to come out and they have committed to giving us 90 minutes of those two so uh, just again something additional to to that um, I don't know if they do it everywhere or if it's just our connections, but uh, we asked about that and they were more than willing. So that's, again, them going out into the community really, really is awesome. 
Thank you. Deputy Mayor? Yes, thank you. I, 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 just a, a very quick question. You say there, well, there's going to be two shows. Um, there's seating capacity. Do you have any idea of what you're looking at numbers wise? Uh, you know, because you've got the hill and everything behind. Uh, just maybe it's premature, but. We, we're comfortable that we could, with the bleachers in their present state uh, and the hill, uh, as long as it's not a torrential downpour, then the, if the hill is accessible, we'll easily be able to, to facilitate 2,000 people per show. Per show, yeah, that's good. And, and there will be no reserve seating. It'll be, you come through the gates. Um, our friends at the Legion are uh, with some uh, youth partnerships are going to, and, and we're going to be open would be the way to say it. It's not going to be big fences. We're actually going to remove the fences off the riding arena and just have a rope. That's the minimum because then you get better vision. And we understand too that if that's done when it's all over, they'll take horses and bring them right up against the rope. So if we have mm -hmm. folks on the west side, which is paved for those in wheelchairs and less mobile, the horses will come to the fence, uh, to the rope, and uh, on the the hill, we will just have some posts or barricades with rope in between and our youth initiatives. We want it to be felt open and family. Um, we also have commitment from the uh, the gate people that if it's a large family, there's a maximum that family will pay. Again, we want them to come. And yeah, Mr. Barrow, it sounds very well organized. Uh, you know, just say all facets of our society are going to get uh, an opportunity to experience the ride, and it, it is it's it, it's a great great show. And we've we've also we're very cognizant that we're on Treaty Six land, and and that will be an integral part of it too. So, thank you, Your Worship. Thank you very much. And see no more hands up. Thank you for the uh, exciting announcement. Uh, we look forward to uh, definitely September 1st, but anything that we can assist you with, uh, let us know and we'll try our best. So you have two commitments, right? Community grant funding and social media. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council. Uh, Thank you, Administration. Thank you very much. Move on to 4.3, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And coming out of our cultural master plan and our CRT, which uh, Councillor Matties uh, was the last uh, Councillor appointee and now Councillor Meyer is the current one, we have our first Poet Laureate. Welcome to uh, Chambers. If you could come sit down and go ahead, administration. to introduce Lisa Mulroney of Stony Plain, who's been selected as the first Poet Laureate for Stony Plain. Uh, Lisa is originally from Redditch, England, and now makes her home in Stony Plain, Alberta. She's an active member of the Edmonton's poetry community, where she participates regularly in readings, festivals, and events. She's the president and co-founder of the Parkland Poets Society in Stony Plain, and serves on the boards of both the Edmonton Stroll of Poets Society and the Writers Guilds of Alberta. Lisa was recently shortlisted for the Malahat Reviews uh, 2019 Open Season Award in Poetry, and her work has appeared in a number of anthologies. We are very excited to have this quality of talent here today. Thanks, Angela. Your Worship, and through you to Council, it's truly a great honour for me to be here today as the first Poet Laureate ever for the town of Stony Plain. Poets have been recognized for their skills and for contributions to society since classical times. And the practice was revived during the Renaissance with the first Poet Laureate of England being appointed in the 17th century. It took Canada a while to get on board. In 2002, we had our first Poet Laureate, George Bowering. In Alberta, there are four other municipalities and five other Poet Laureates. So there are Poet Laureates in Edmonton, Calgary, Banff, St. Albert, and now Stony Plain. In this role, I will be serving as Ambassador of the Literary Arts uh, in our town and the surrounding area. 
And during my two-year term, I hope to advocate for artistic and creative sharing of the written and spoken word. I'd like to be able to demonstrate that poetry is accessible and can be a caring and empathetic way for all people of all ages and all walks of life to share their stories and feel a sense of belonging in our community. I'm going to be reading a poem for you today, and it is entitled, Our Stories. And this poem is dedicated to the people of Stony Plain. Our Stories. Towns are like people. Some are blossoming teenagers who like to stay up late telling tall tales to impress the girls. Others are aging grandparents who take themselves to bed early. After telling the same story a different way, forgetting most of the details, but remembering a few more names. Here on the hopeful meadows of the prairie, our grandparents worked hard to tuck us in at night. They turned on the lampposts to remind us to be ourselves, a new generation whose imagination and sweet dreams could splash the colors of springtime against every wall. We know in whose cradle we found our peace. We acknowledge in whose care the land was nurtured long before our tracks wiped away their gentle prints, and we respect them. In remembering, there is belonging, a welcome we extend to the past and to the future, to every new child who shows up at our schools terrified, because the climate is different here, and some words are too difficult to translate. On sunny days at the old brick schoolhouse, the wind dies down and the flags barely stir. The bell is silent now, but the noisy blue jays announce the children who have come to play. They come looking for reasons to color outside the lines, and they find them in artifacts and spooky ghost stories. I'm not afraid of the ghosts at the Opperhauser house even if they do trigger electromotive force fluctuations, even if they do whisper warnings into digitally enhanced audio. But I think about them sometimes, staring out of windows, creaking across floorboards. The children beg to know more about them, to fuel the torch-lit fires and friendship of sleepovers and summer camp. They retell the stories in ghostly voices around campfires at nearby lakes. Come on in, stay out. Come on in, stay out. The contradictory cautions chug along with a cadence that reminds me of the town's twin tracks, bringing rail cars into town and out again, into town and out again, into town, and I'm late again. I always seem to be chained to those tracks, and always when I'm late for work or school, as if old Sheriff Umbach is keeping me there for not paying my taxes. <laughs> but then I realize paying my dues is poetry, and the pause is a gift a rare moment for reflection. These moments, our thoughts, are our stories, given breathing space at the crossings. And while the trains pass, we have time to ponder the things that get lost in the haze of living. This town is a precocious child who we tuck in at night when the lampposts come on, who chatters in the schoolyard like a noisy blue jay, who asks to hear our stories, but most endearing. This town 
pauses to listen, even if all we do is complain about the trains. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, that was awesome and definitely original. That very speaks volumes uh, about the town of Stony Plain. Thank you, Your Worship. Members of Council, any comments? Deputy Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, I, I missed your first version. <laughs> Our poet laureate was wanting to practice here, and I came in, and we that she ended up leaving, but. You did a very wonderful job, and uh, it was a good reading, and I'm very proud of the work that you've done, and uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Anything else? Councilor Laurie? Thank you, Your Worship, and thank you so much for coming in and presenting your poetry. Um, one thing that hasn't been mentioned, I don't think, was the haiku a day. And I think that is fantastic. Um, for those who don't know, Lisa's committed to doing a haiku a day for an entire term as our Poet Laureate as a tribute to our sister town, Shikawi, in Japan. So I've seen several of them that you've put out so far, and I'm absolutely loving it. And I look forward to seeing that every day. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. And through you to Councillor Laurie, I, it, it's actually worth mentioning because I would like to encourage um, members of the town of Stony Plain and the surrounding area and anybody else who would like to get involved to also post a haiku. Anytime they feel like it, using the hashtag Stony Plain Haiku and perhaps we can uh, make a team sport of it. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for your commitment to, um, to writing one for the next two years to celebrate our relationship with uh, Shikawi. Are there works to have that uh, bounded together as a book so that we can send it to Shikawi after the two years? Um, through your worship, um, it will be up to us to decide and, and Lisa as well as to what she would like to put her project to. We do have money earmarked for a project. We would like to see a community project go forward and certainly this is something that could be uh, put together if that's what they wish to do with the project going forward, so yeah. I'd also like to mention, Your Worship, that I have letters going out to all the schools in the region to um, extend an offer to come out to classrooms, join teachers and students for a class period, and give a presentation or workshops as, as teachers need and desire. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that commitment. Any more questions, comments? See none. Congratulations on being Stone Plains' first poet laureate, and we do expect and we actually anticipate uh, the growth in our community in terms of culture, um, in terms of art, in terms of poetry. Um, Stony Plain has and always will um, continue to focus on that. That is one of the things that we have um, strived to keep and maintain in our community is to having that cultural aspect, and you definitely will be a, a centerpiece of that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Worship. Okay. Uh, members of Council, before we move on, can we get some pictures, please? Uh, Lisa, if you want to join us, please. Thank you. Thank you. 
Suck, suck pocket. No, just hand in pocket. <laughs> All right. Members of Council, we'll move on, continue with our uh, agenda. There's no business items, so we'll move on to Council information and Council discussion. Members of Council, anything to uh, report or add? We'll start with uh, Councillor Matties. A couple of minutes to go through this because I want to share what uh, I um, uh, learned at the Alberta Care Conference I attended last week. Go ahead. Okay. So there was a number of speakers and, and uh, I came back with certainly some information that I think would be helpful for our community. And uh, so the first was, uh, the first speaker was Joe Angevine. He's the manager of the High River Landfill. Uh, in, in terms of, of uh, he was talking about the record rainfall they had in 2013. And to, to put it in perspective, uh, in 2005, they had their highest level of, of rainfall, which was 1,740 cubic meters per second. In 2013, eight years later, they had um, an extra 1,000 cubic meters per second, so 2,670. So what he was basically saying, and he's actually, he, he, he had created, um, or went back to school and got his master's, and his master's was on disaster debris management. And so he was, he wanted to, um, to basically share with us um, some of his advice that he had learned um, through going through that experience. He said, first of all, this was a once in a, in a hundred year event. So, and, and every community needs to prepare for that hundred, once in a hundred year con, uh, event. And so I do have one question uh, for administration as I go through this, uh, or, or at this part of the presentation, is um, with Stony Plain being located on an aquifer, so through you uh, to administration, uh, can you tell us, um, you know, if you were looking at our hundred year risk, would, would that influence a risk of, of flooding in this community? And, you know, any, any thoughts about that? Uh, Your Worship, uh, through to Councillor uh, Maddies, I can provide some comment on that, I guess, uh, just some general or broad strokes. So, um, as Council is aware, when we have new developments, uh, they often include um, uh, storm ponds and storm systems. And, and I believe, you know, I mean, some flooding uh, is generally linked to the ability of your storm system to handle, uh, you know, the one in 100 or one in 25 or one in 50 and so on and so forth uh, uh, storms. Um, you know, historically, uh, Stony Plain has done stormwater master planning, so on and so forth. Uh, and again, sorry, I'll maybe just back up. Uh, we don't necessarily have to worry about too much overland flooding if that's uh, you know, the, just to comment, you know, I mean, whether it's rivers or ice melt or snow melt or whatever. So most of our, if we're concerned about flood events, they're typically, uh, you know, heavy rainstorms. I believe there was one that came through a little bit before I got here. It might have been about 2008, got a pretty heavy rainstorm that uh, uh, hit the town or whatever. Um, and we do get, uh, you know, some flash flood or some storm backups uh, periodically, uh, depending on the amount of rain that falls uh, in any given time. Um, so, Your Worship, uh, uh, when we do uh, land use uh, documents, MDPs, ASPs, they will typically require a stormwater master plan of sorts. 
Um, we will do them periodically as, as a town on the entire uh, community. Um, and uh, generally, although you know I can't quote on that, but generally uh, they will model to the one in 100 unless there's other circumstances uh, that are in play for one reason or another. Um, I'll leave it at that, Your Worship. I'm not sure if I answered the question, but that's just a general background, I guess, on stormwater management from our perspective. That's correct. So yeah, so most of the, uh, the storm management that has been initiated over the last few years is based on the, the large flooding that's happened in a region. Uh, the storm management ponds are pre-described to release water at a certain rate to prevent flooding downstream. Mm -hmm. So that has been kind of addressed and taken care of within the uh, development process. Okay, good. Yeah, I just wanted to ensure we we're quite confident with that. What he um, had to mention, he says, what was done in High River was, first of all, he talked about poor land management, um, determining and looking at areas where they should uh, not be uh, developing in the community, and they, that just wasn't done. He said that they never um, thought of, in terms of a big major event, like they, you know, knew that there would be issues, but something that would destroy the whole community, and that's, he, said, he was suggesting that we need to think big um, when it comes to these types of events. Uh, secondly, um, or sorry, third, he said, Town of High River and the government of Alberta missed ex um, important expert recommended components in their, di their disaster plan. Um, and, and he said, despite it being a high risk floodplain. And then finally, he said, there was an absolute disconnect between people who plan for the disaster and those who have to deal with it. So he gave us some recommendations and I wanted to share them um, with everybody. There's 10 recommendations. Uh, the first was uh, pre-planning, um, adding uh, add to the existing emergency response plan. He said, make sure there's a three to four page insert for, wage, for waste management contracting and safety. So for example, he was referring to asbestos if there has to be a cleanup after an event like that, that people were going into the homes in High River and um, having significant exposure to that. So just, just one example. Um, anticipate a natural disaster to be way bigger than you think it will be. Third, select only professional haulers to go to a landfill pre-plan the process and establish rates beforehand. So, um, or as you're going through your planning process. And the reason for that, what was happening is number one, they were being you know, gouged with regards to overall cost, et cetera, um, because there's a cleanup after whatever event it is um, in place. And, and so how do you go about doing that? So the pre-planning process um, and establishing uh, those, the, you know, those relationships with the haulers. Select large field for community to, to take for the community to take things to. So, for example, um, what was happening in High uh, River? Everybody was trying to go to the dump, and it just was um, completely completely dysfunctional. So, what they had to do is establish a large land area that the Alberta government cleaned up afterwards. So that was established in their 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 overall plan. Consider recycling options for the debris. He said, never once do we think about recycling wood or recycling glass that had been taken from homes, et cetera. So um, having that part of the, uh, the uh, um, res emergency response plan as well. Designate street corner to place home debris on the ground and not use bins. So what happened there is they were trying to put bins in all the communities and they were not able to get um, that, that the garbage moved out from that. It was much easier to take one corner in each community or on, on each um, roadway and then it just be picked up and then um, have a wagon train system as they called it for loading and delivery to the landfill. Uh, point seven was resident communication. Um, that the resident has to be aware that what's reasonable as to when they would get back home. And he said that was a big disconnect in the community at the time. Uh, change of ICS, and I'm gonna forget what the name of that uh, is, but it's uh, the overall um, disaster planning document. And it said it needs to better incorporate disaster debris planning into the plan. Uh, and then he mentioned that uh, he would encourage the town staff to take um, the SWANA Disaster Debris Management course, which is now available in 2019. 
and finally, non-government organizations. He said that we need to, um, way in advance of an emergency situation, have a relationship with an organization called the Samaritan's Purse. He said they're experts in this area and you need to create a relationship with an organization like that before an emergency happens in your community. So I thought he had some very good advice. Um, his master's was based on this, so I, I uh, felt very, very privileged to be able to have had part of all of the research that he had done. Uh, the next uh, speaker was from uh, Recycling, Alberta Recycling. And it was interesting listening to her because she was, um, I think, a little bit concerned with regards to the possibility of extended producer responsibility making, maybe taking over um, the existing recycling programs. And so I think by her being there, it was very good that we were able to share that that's, there's room for everything. It's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a program that would build on existing recycling programs that are in place. Uh, in terms of, of uh, um, what was a keynote from, from her was that as eight, effective April 1st, 2019, their electronics program funding is going to change, so they're going to increase from $130 per ton to $155 per ton. So they basically suggested that in your community that if you're wanting to have an electronics um, uh, um, recycling collection program, that we should be doing it before April 1st. Otherwise, the rate's going up quite significantly. Tire processing. I provided to our CAO today um, a brochure with regards to a product that's called Tire Derived Aggregate, which is TDA. And um, what we, they have, um, of course, demonstrated through playgrounds and things like that. But also now, Peace Country um, had used these tire, um, this TDA, for a major road project. And the cost of the major road project was significantly lower. And for 15 years, this road has been in very good condition. So it's something that I thought we might want to consider. They're willing to come out and do a presentation for us. And if that's maybe something that we could use for maybe some of the new development um, as we have to create some roads in this community, that maybe that might be an option for that. Uh, oh, and one other thing with regards to paint. Uh, so there's a paint recycling um, program. So when we, we toured the plant and they produce a higher quality of paint using just existing old cans of, of uh, acrylic paint and they will mix colors, like they have a dark blue, a light blue, a, a, a dark brown, a light brown, a you know, dark red, a light red. Um, and, and you know, so if you're just using that, whether that is to, to paint a building or something like that, it, it, the cost is half the price and we're using recycled paint. So hopefully we can incorporate that into our community as well. And finally, uh, one of the, the, I felt was one of the, I'm not going to go over EPR, our extended producer responsibility, although we talked about that quite a bit. Um, but I would like to talk about the SAEWA project, the SAWA project, Southern Alberta Energy from Waste Alliance. I'm sure probably everybody's heard of that before. Uh, but what it is, is basically a waste to energy recycling uh, program. They have been working on this for umpteen years, like forever. And they're finally at a point right now where the Alberta government, after doing $1.5 million worth of engineering work that they were required to do for the provincial government, they have now allowed them, uh, for, they've given them $400,000 to identify the best place to build this facility. This facility will take, for example, if Calgary produces 300 tons per year of waste, and this is the stuff that we can't recycle anywhere else. There's, you know, like the plastics and things like that, that that's what they want, um, that uh, they would be able to recycle um, and reduce the, the um, greenhouse gas emissions significantly, the equivalent of what that waste would be for Calgary. So, um, and then I asked them, I said, well, can we have multiple facilities in Alberta? And they said, yeah, five or six of these could be, definitely be in place and complement existing recycling programs. So have we, that was my next question, is have we looked at this at all? 
Uh, your Worship, um, generally speaking, I, I don't think we've put a lot of effort into that, uh, you know, I mean, into reviewing those sorts of facilities. I, I, um, I don't believe so, Your Worship, not, not certainly in my time. Do you want to continue? Well, I just, I guess I, I would like to um, just emphasize that, I, I mean, this is something I guess in the past that people were not interested, like nobody seemed to want it in their community. All of a sudden, there's six municipalities that absolutely want this facility in their community. So I think um, if, if, I'm not, you know, I'm not certain that this is, this is an, an absolute good solution, but I think it's one that as a region, we could look at exploring and see, we've already done so much work on, uh, you know, the, that other facility that we didn't feel would work. Maybe something like this may work mm -hmm. or maybe some combination. Yes, that's okay. a continued discussion with our regional partners in the larger picture of our strategic planning. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I just think it's important to look at that. So that is everything from me. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, yes, I think that was great that uh, you were able to bring some of that back. Um, just a couple of days ago, we had uh, Joan Botkin that was here. She was part of our social media training session, and she was a communications um, person over in um, High River during this flood. Okay. And one of the biggest things that she pointed out was that you know they can been planned, they can been ready, but nobody knew the size of this. And the fact that was that they had floods yearly because of where they're built. And when they were going door to door and telling everybody to move out, this is bigger than we've ever seen, people were not listening because they just said, yeah, it happens every year. Don't worry about it. And I think, um, so again, through all the natural disasters that have, that have happened throughout Alberta, um, the Slave Lake fires, the High River flooding, as well as the, the Fort McMurray um, fires are continuing. Our staff are... Um, guess massaging and changing our, 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 emergency, our emergency management system in response to, to account for all those things that uh, we learn from each and every uh, disaster that happens. So thank you. Well, may, may I just make one more comment? So this group, or this um, is a conference that occurs twice per year. The next one will be in Peace River. There was a variety of mayors, CAOs, um, and a lot of technical people in this area, but um, really a great group of people, um, very collaborative and very open in terms of discussion, and I think it's well worth attending, without question. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, nothing really, Your Worship, just that I'd like to thank the town. Uh, somebody's going around and spreading some asphalt in many, many potholes. There's quite a few left to be done, but uh, I thank you for passing on to our planning and infrastructure manager because I see them slowly being filled, and that's, that's good to see. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Meyer. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Your Worship. Um, I just uh, would share with the rest of the council uh, an opportunity to meet with a number of uh, artists uh, that held a their collection, uh, they are collectively called uh, Collective Devonair. Uh, and Karen was quite proficient in French, which I am not, so I'm not sure what that means. Uh, but I had great conversations with these uh, two, two of the five showed up, and uh, uh, there's going to be a number of other arts uh, type things coming up. So I encourage everyone to make it down to the Multi and check them out. That's very good. Thank you. Councillor Bennett. Uh, nothing at this time, Mr. Mayor. Council Lori. Thank you, Your Worship. I will just echo Deputy Mayor's sentiments in respect to the conditions of the roads. I've noticed the exact same thing. Um, in particular, last council meeting, I identified two spots that within days were taken care of, and they were pretty significant spots. So, uh, again, passing on the kudos to that. And just again, to the town in general for taking the steps forward to be unique, be different, and respect our cultural with things like our Poet Laureate. Uh, I think that is a fantastic step for us to take. I think it puts us in a distinguished crowd, being one of only five communities, and we most certainly are the smallest community on that list. So I really appreciate the work that the administration puts into that and doesn't forget you know, that there's a lot of things that this town is about, and those type of things are Stony Plain. So thank you so much for ensuring that happened. Thank you. Um, just an update. Um, I attended the Superative Awards uh, for on Saturday, and one of our own very own staff 
um, Travis Ratsoy, his daughter was being nominated. He's a uh, youth leader, so that was a great distinction for her, for her. As well as we had three business owners that were uh, recognized. Uh, uh, one one, and we also had some um, surrounding area um, women as well that was recognized. So that was a, a great event to recognize uh, women leaders in our community. Okay. The next thing is the March 7th is the State of the Region uh, address for our, all three municipalities. If you have your tickets, uh, we'll see you there. If not, it's sold out. I can sell you mine for about $10,000. So if anybody's interested and you don't have a ticket, uh, please give me contact. Uh, $10,000 is the starting bid. <laughs> and with that, uh, that ends our GMP. We'll take a quick recess and then we'll go to uh, the briefing after. Thank you. Good work, guys.